Now let's take a look at Bollinger Bands. This is one of the more visually attractive of the indicators. Um, it is also more popular because it does work very well if you know what it's doing. So let's go and add it and then we'll talk it through. So we go back to our indicators list. We head on down to trend and select Bollinger Bands. I'm going to leave the period as 20 and if you remember what the period is, it's the amount of candles or the amount of time that you are looking at. I will explain deviations once we have loaded up in front of us. As always, we're applying it to the closing value. And under style, I'm going to choose a darker color so it's easier to see on your screens. Then I'm going to click OK. This is the point where most people look at my screen and go, what is that? I'm going to shrink this a bit so we can see all the bands inside. Now, Bollinger Bands is similar to Stochastic in the way that what it is doing is it's measuring the volatility of the market. And how it does that is it is looking at the size of the recent candles, depending on what you set the period as. You'll see in the quiet times of the market, we have what we call a Bollinger Squeeze. This is where if the market is moving sideways and the candles are relatively small, the Bollinger Bands get closer and closer together. During times when we have very large candles, this is when the market has been very volatile and we have these huge candles, then we see that the Bollinger Bands expand. The reason why it is doing that is it is measuring the size of the candles and the size of the candles is how much the market has actually moved. It is then doing what's called a standard deviation. So let's say the average candle over the last 20 candles has been 20 pips big. It's going to take the value of 20 and that is a single standard deviation, meaning the average candle is 20 pips big. We have ours set to two standard deviations, so it will then draw Bollinger Bands at 40 pips away, both higher and lower. The center line is a moving average. So you will see the distance between the moving average to the top Bollinger Band will be the same as to the bottom. It might not always look like that. As you see that it is coming down at an angle, very often some people think that the distance to the bottom is greater than the distance to the top, or vice versa. But I show you that at any time, if you draw your crosshair perfectly, you will see that we have the same distance in either direction. So it is drawing these deviations. Now what this is telling us is it is a graphic representation of what is considered an acceptable trading range for the current market condition. That's a very fancy way of saying if the markets are inside these two Bollinger Bands, this is normal, this is fine, there's nothing really unexpected going on here. I'll use this as an example. Here we had a lot of short candles coming, so the moving average is responding, telling us that the market is coming down. Bollinger Bands is measuring the average size of the candles. Now at this point we see we had a bit of a Bollinger squeeze. That's because the market was recently moving mostly sideways and the candles are pretty small with the occasional candle that's popping out a bit. So because the average candle is small, the deviation, meaning the difference between the moving average and the outer lines, starts getting smaller. As the market starts expanding and we start seeing these bigger candles, you'll see that the distance between the moving average and the outer lines will also expand. And because the market is in a bearish movement, the moving average moves down, and therefore, so do the outer lines. Now at the times that the market is between these two lines, or within the Bollinger Bands itself, it is saying this is normal, this is expected, there's nothing strange going on here. However, when the market starts popping out, like it does at this section, Bollinger Bands is almost mimicking what Stochastics is saying. It's saying that based on recent history that we determine how many candles we're looking at, the market has moved down too much. This is abnormal. We're expecting it to pull back into the Bollinger Bands. When we have a situation like this craziness here, where we had the markets moving very sideways and we can see how we get this beautiful Bollinger squeeze happening here and then all of a sudden some massive news event would have come out 
and we now have this candle sticking well out of the Bollinger Bands. This is saying this is incredibly abnormal. This is outside of the Bollinger Bands. Based on recent history, the movement that is happening right now is overbought. So we can use this in a similar way to stochastics, both as a confirmation and a potential trigger. If we use it as a confirmation indicator, we basically don't want to see that the candles have moved outside of the Bollinger Bands, because we are then saying that the market has already moved too much in that direction. Like let's say we had a strategy which told us this is a good time to buy. I'll put a price level down there. If we had a strategy telling us for whatever reason that this is a good time to buy, or if you're a new trader and you've just logged in and you look at this massive candle and you think, I want some of that, you go ahead and you place a buy. Bollinger Bands is telling us no. This movement that's just happened is well outside of the normal expected trading. This is going to pull back inside. Now it doesn't always come down in a short, but it does pull back in. And you'll see that this trade has lost a lot of steam quite quickly. If we go back, we can see more and more examples of how when things really pop out, it gets pulled back inside the range of the Bollinger. So that, in a nutshell, is what Bollinger Bands is. Just remember, what it's doing is it's taking the recent history, depending on the period that you've set, it's measuring the average size of the candles. It's ignoring the direction of the candles. It's first measuring the average size of the candles. And the average size is considered one deviation. We set our Bollinger Bands to draw two standard deviations. So it's doubling that average number. Then the center line is a moving average. And the deviation lines, being the top and the bottom, or the outer Bollinger Bands, is what determines what is considered an acceptable trading range for the market. So this whole movement here, with the market just kind of moving along quite nicely. For the most part, this is all normal, this is all acceptable. According to Bollinger Bands, this is fine, just keep on going. The moment it starts jumping outside of the bands, like it did over here with the Brexit that came through, this is telling us this is not normal. This has moved too quickly. Expect a pullback.